Hey, Coop. How's it going? I'm good. How about you? Good, good. So, uh, obviously, big win on Saturday um, over FSU, rival who you guys haven't beat in a couple of years. So, just how does the team after that make sure you guys, like, stay focused? Like, second, you know, last third of the season coming up, how do you make sure you stay focused and don't, you know, have, like, an emotional downswing after a big win over a rival? Um, I think we 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 really winning that game just training like it was another regular game. It wasn't like we really didn't go in there and look at look at it as a rivalry. We just went in and look at it like another one and over. So I think the team, like we still the same, we still being complacent and we still just doing what we've been doing the whole season. So I think I mean it was a good win, a good rivalry win. Cause we didn't beat them in like how many years, like three, four years or whatever it was. But I feel like it just it just made us just even go harder than what we've been doing. So I feel like the team's still being complacent and we just still focusing on focusing on being one and each week. Next, we'll go to Jordan McPherson of the Miami Herald. Jordan. Yeah. Hey there, Coop. Uh wanted to ask you about Duke's defense, specifically their front seven. The, they're one of the top teams in tackles for loss and sacks. Just what's the challenge gonna be like going against them this week? And what have you seen from how they attack on film? Um, I think they're good. They got a good front seven. Like you said, they wanted the um they wanted the best in college right now. I mean, they force a lot of tackles for loss, a lot of turnovers, especially in the back end. They know how to punch the ball out. So I think we just gotta go in there and be ready for a challenge and be ready to be 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 keep being prepared on focusing on focusing on the eight gaps and focusing on moving the ball and keep running the ball how we've been doing the past two games. So I feel like it's gonna be something good that we ain't seen. I feel like they're gonna be like the part of one of the toughest challenges we had so far since they forced a lot of turnovers and not to punch the ball out good. So I feel like we just got to go in there and just keep the ball off the ground. We'll be good. Our next question comes from Matt Shadella, Kane Sport. Matt. Yeah, hey, Inez. Um, it seemed like, you know, FSU had some success, maybe making Cam Ward a little bit uncomfortable um, mm -hmm. with some pressures and things like that. Was that more just like sort of FSU bringing a lot of guys? Were there Was there anything on the offensive line that you think you guys could have done better or need to do better? Um, can you sort of just talk about that? Um. I wouldn't say like it's something. We, well, I mean, we could have did better. We could have passed better. We could have did a lot of stuff better. But they just, I mean, like like you said, Florida, Florida State. They they got a whole bunch of NFL guys on their team. So I already knew it was gonna be a challenge, even though we ain't look like we ain't really scored them in the point how we supposed to. We kept a lot of field goal. But like you said, um, FSU got a good. They got a good back end, and they, they know what they're doing. Like they um, whole bunch of guys that's going to the recent bowl game this year, and they got a whole bunch of guys that's going to the league. So I feel like they did. They did. A, um, they were successful. On stopping us from passing, uh, I just feel like we could have just did our job better. But you know, we ain't be really be focused on that. Focusing on that, and we just go to week to week and just worry about doing our job. Next, we'll go to Cass Clayton of New Era Prep. Cass, hey Coop, it's C two. How you doing? I'm good. What about you? I'm good. I mean, in the last couple of games, the running game has been rolling like on another level, confidence wise. What does it due to the O line when you guys get to the I guess pin your ears back, lean on the defense, especially like in later in the games. Um, like you said, like we just we've been running the ball like they past two games. Well, I mean, we trying to just stop. We trying to focus on being like a two dimensional offense instead of just being passing. We are trying to like show the defense so defense can't just come in and be worried about only thing they gotta do is stop the pad to stop our offense. So I realized when we showing that we can just run the ball, it's, it's a lot. You don't have to worry about stopping the pass and the run. So I feel like that overnight is a lot because we know we could have been running the ball good all season, but we mm -hmm. just we really weren't showing it. But now I feel like we showed it, and I opened up defense eyes that you got to they, that boy you got to stop, but you got to come in and stop both. So I feel like like you said, I mean we leaning on defense. It's fun to me. I like running the ball. So I feel like that's that's a good thing for us since the, the end almost like the middle going to the end of the season. So I feel like that's good for us. Appreciate you. We'll do a few more for Coop. We'll go back to Jordan McPherson of the Miami Herald. Jordan? Yeah, hey again, Coop. I just want to ask you, Jalen Rivers being back the last two weeks, how does he change the dynamic of the offensive line? I mean, Jalen Rivers, he coming in both games that we played. He played – he's been playing left guard and left tackle. So I feel like he came in and helped us just improve that's better. So we got, like, a whole bunch of guys just coming in and rotating right now, like guys, Marquette Bell, he coming in and playing, Jalen Rivers, Matt, all the guys on the left side. So I feel like he just improved now O line than what it was than the boys had been the whole season. I mean, Jalen, a talented guy, he know how to play both. He know how to play the whole O line. So I feel like he just coming in and just made us better than what we already was. So I feel like that's a good thing to have him back. So that's my guy. We'll go back to Adam Lichtenstein, the Sun Sentinel. Adam, hey again. Um, you know, like you were talking about Jalen playing, you know, left guard and left tackle. How much, you know, I, 
we've heard it from before from you know Mario and, and different coaches and stuff. How much do you guys cross train in different positions? How versatile does that make you guys? I mean, at practice, like the only thing we train, we train all positions. Like we gotta know the right left side. So I feel like they're just improving us just for things like that. When Jay Rev came back, he probably didn't know that he was gonna be playing both left guard and left tackle until coach told him. So I feel like us just being prepared, like through practice and knowing how to play both sides in each position, I feel like they helped them, they helped us out a lot just in case somebody do go down. And I probably had to go out there and play tackle or something. So I feel like that's good to just learn and keep practicing because you never know what, what may happen. So I feel like that's a good thing that we do. Anything else for Coop? Awesome, Coop. We appreciate your time and good luck on Saturday. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, Damien. How are you? Good. How about you? Doing great. Uh, we've talked with you the last couple of weeks about your game specifically in the run game overall, how you guys have made big strides the last couple of weeks. With the offensive line specifically, what have you seen from them that has helped you guys with your success? Um, I mean, just doing their job. I mean, yeah, they're just doing their job. I mean, we like, like I said before, coming off the bye week, we kind of all had that conversation. We need to pick it up and still need to pick it up. I haven't played our best ball, so we're just trying to get better every game, every day in practice. So, yeah, it's Glad it's showing up. Just keep working hard. And then this week you're facing a Duke team that's one of the top teams in terms of tackles for loss and stuff that nature. What's the challenge going to be going up against them, and what have you seen from them on film? Um, they're you know they play hard as a defense as a whole. You know they get to the ball, chase the ball. They play hard. They're one of the top teams statistically. But you know same thing going into this week. Want to know mentality. Wanting to execute and get better every day. This. Yeah. Next we'll go to Matt Shadow at Kane Sport. Matt. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, Damien. Um, so coaches had mentioned that they thought maybe you coming in a little bit later than other guys held you back early in the season. Um, is, is that something that you agree with? Um, you know, did something sort of click with you the last couple of weeks? Can you just sort of talk about that a little bit? Um, I mean, just kind of going into the bye week, like I said, just taking a look at myself and just the season, what I need to work on and to get in the flow with the O-line and stuff like that, just kind of. Yeah, I mean, I just double down on that, but just getting better every day with the team and growing as a whole. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein of the Sun Sentinel. Adam. Hey, Damian, how are you? Good, how about you? Good, good. Um, So, obviously, you know, you've gotten the ball a lot uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, Mark and AJ have gotten the ball a good amount. Um, How have you seen the younger backs, you know, Jordan, uh, Chris Johnson, Chris Wheatley-Humphrey, how have they been kind of handling their roles and, and, you know, how have they been progressing in practice? Yeah, I mean, like I said, we it's a close knit group. We're all close to each other, just feeding off each other's energy. Even in practice, you know, we all want each other to make plays in practice. Anytime, we just want each other to execute and make plays and make an impact. So in practice, you know, we just coaching each other up. Even when Coach Maris not giving us little nuggets or anything, just coaching each other up. What we all see from each other and just how we can get better. Yeah, I mean, they're all they're all explosive running backs. They can all run the ball. Like I said, everybody in the room can run the ball. From me to Chris Wheatley, Chris Johnson, everybody, everybody can run the ball. But, yeah, just getting better every day is kind of their mentality, all our mentality. So just focus on getting better as a group and, yeah. And now that, you you know, you've worked with Coach Merritt for, you know, two-thirds of a season and, you know, back going back towards the summer and stuff, um, just what what stands out about him just as a coach? What makes him different maybe from other running backs coaches? Uh, just his mentality kind of, you know, coming in, coming into the game, just his mentality overall. I mean, he's got that, you know, he says switch, switch always on, never off. So he kind of just take that mentality with him everywhere he goes and just listen to him. You know, he kind of, he brings that energy to the group as well before the game, you know. Um, I kind of said it before too in an earlier meeting, he just helped my mental uh, being on the field, just thinking clearly and just wanting to dominate the game. He's helped me a lot. So We'll do a few more for Damon. Next, we'll go to Cass Clayton of New York Prep. Cass? Hey, Six, it's C2. How you feeling today? Good. How about you? All right. Uh, uh, just to piggyback off of Coach Merritt, just speak on, you know, some of the different ways he challenges you guys just to maximize your opportunities when your number is called. Um, The way he challenges us, definitely, you know, just, hmm. I don't know, just really getting better every rep. You know, he kind of has something for us every every rep, you know, whether it's ball security, pressing the line, anything. He's just helping us every rep, just getting better. You know, it's always something to fix, whether it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's always something to fix. It's never, it's never, it's never going to be perfect. So it's helping us in that aspect, always wanting to get better and wanting to learn and be a sponge, soaking up information. I feel like you guys have different uh, dynamics as far as running backs and style. You're all are, are, explosive 
you know, when your number is called, I mean, what, what is he, he calls you guys for a different reason. What is he telling you guys um, when your number's called? Um, just go out there and make a play. I mean, like you said, just we're going in there to make a play and make an impact on the game. We want to, whatever role we have, whatever our job is on that, on that play, we just want to execute it to our best abilities. And as if we all do that as a team, big things happen. So, yeah. We'll wrap up for Damien with Marcus Benjamin at Canes County. Marcus? Hey, Damien, how's it going? Good. How about you? Pretty good. Uh, I wanted to ask about Cam Ward's speech during the Florida State game. It kind of got out through social media of this week. And, um, of course, the team was up 17-7 at the time, yet uh, he his speech was uh, communicated in a way where you guys were almost down. How often does he have those type of – uh, speeches for you guys what was your reaction to it and just what is it that kind of have him as as a leader uh vocally um, I mean it's great you know he pushes us every every day every day every rep I mean like I said we haven't played our best ball at all we know what it can be and we just got to put that on tape we got to come out here every day at practice and want to know mentality every day that's how it gets to the weekend want to know so we just got to execute on practice on green tree go out there and execute on the weekend um but yeah just pushing each other growing as a whole and just executing, doing our job. Like I said, we all do our job on that specific play. Big things can happen. So, Thank you, Damien. We appreciate your time and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Hey, Ruben. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on just overall how you think this defense is coming along playing. And if you think, you know, sort of there's a, a lot higher level the defense can reach um, or if it's already sort of, you know, playing at a really high level compared to what you guys can play at. Well, um, yeah, we definitely come along as the weeks progress. Uh, we haven't reached our max or so played our best game yet. Um, the best is yet to come, but overall, we come we coming together week by week, getting tighter, um, a tighter bond, and I feel like we're starting to trust each other more. So once we all play together as one, we'll start playing more complimentary football. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein of the Sun Sentinel. Adam, hey Ruben, how's it going? Good, you? good. Um, so obviously, you know, big win for you guys over FSU. You know, it's your first time beating the Seminoles. Um, how do you guys make, or how did that feel, first of all, to get that rivalry win? And then how do you guys make sure you don't, you know, uh, have, feel like have like an emotional downturn, kind of like don't get hyped up for the rest of the year after after a big win like that? Oh, well, that's a great feeling. Um, going one, one and oh, then one and oh against the rival. But like Coach Crystal Ball, we preach one and oh every week. So we're not too dwell on the past. Now it's for the next opponent, and we just, Appreciate that this Saturday we want to know again, and that's our mindset for every week. Next, we'll go to Tim Reynolds of the Associated Press. Tim, thanks, Josh. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning. Um, I wanted to ask you, Cam. Cam is obviously the leader of the offense, without question. Quarterback always is, or almost always is. I wonder if you can give an example or two, just what he's meant to the defense, what he means to all the guys in the room, the way he leads the personality he has, the commitment, the work ethic. How how does he help the entire roster, not just the offense? Well, he means a lot. He's a competitor. Um, that brings up the whole team. We all compete throughout the whole course of practice. And in the film room, he's also a leader. He's vocal. And that's something that's just for both sides of the ball, not just the offense as a whole team. Uh, how he leads it, not only face the players, but sometimes even the coaches. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Jordan McPherson of the Miami Herald. Jordan? Hey there, Ruben. You've talked with us a few times about just how close you and Akeem Mesador are. What strides have you seen from him this year, especially coming back from the injury? He's playing inside now instead of the instead of on the edge like he used to. How have you seen him progress this season? He progressed really well. I mean, like Coach, uh, Coach JT always say, um, the numbers may not be there, but if you turn on the tape, you can definitely see the impact that's going on. And you can definitely see the impact. I mean, like the last couple of games when we've been lining up side by side, you can see the like the impact we have on the game and all of the stuff that's going on, all the stuff we wreaking havoc and how we play together as one. And that's my guy, man. We're real close. I mean, he's been having a hell of a year. I'm real proud of him. And he just continue to do what he do. He playing the football that he know how to play. And then just curious, as you guys have been watching tape the last few days, what stands out about Duke's offense to you? Oh, my explosive explosive guys, oh, they play together as one. Great defense, spins all line. Uh, they overall a great team. To somebody we gotta come in with the right mindset to go on and know and do what we do like those Chris Ball says. Anything else for Ruben? 
Awesome, Ruben. We appreciate your time and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Hey there, OJ. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. I just want to ask you, uh, guys had a big win against FSU. The defense, you guys made some improvements, it looked like, compared to the last couple weeks. What stood out to you the most about what the defense did, and what can you build on from that going into the, this week against Duke? Um, I think we did a, a great job. I feel like uh, we're coming together more and more. And as, as long as we keep watching film and studying and preparing and having our coaches with us, I think we're going to be great. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein of the Sun Sentinel. Adam? Hey, OJ. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Um, kind of similarly, just, you know, what have you seen kind of from that, you know, your group of of young DBs? I know obviously you're the one getting the most playing time, but how have you guys kind of come along over the course of the year? I mean, we're coming along great, man. I feel like as long as we keep getting prepared and watching older guys in front of us and we're developing and evolving, I feel like we're doing great. And you will see a lot of us when the time has come. And what would you say you, you've learned the most maybe from some of the older guys, you know, guys like, like Daryl Porter and all them? Uh, Daryl Porter, Jadis Richard. Uh, I mean, everybody really taught me a lot of things. I mean, as as long as I keep going, I'm just getting better and better. I mean, I watch film with them. Um, I study with Coach G and Coach Sewell and all of them. I feel like I'm just getting better and better. Next, we'll go to Kaz Clayton of New Era Prep, Kaz. Hey, OJ, it's you too. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. How are you? Good. I just want you to reflect. Reflect on your first big rivalry game at home um, in front of your family, friends, and former teammates. Um, I felt the rivalry was good. I mean, I think I played a, a good game, but I'm still working on it, still trying to get better. But the rivalry was great. The, the fans were rocking. And it was it was a good, a good environment. Next, we'll go to Marcus Benjamin at Canes County. Marcus. Hey, OJ. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Um, according to Pro Football Focus, you were the second highest graded defensive player in the game against Florida State. So um, just wanted to ask, what was working for you during that game technically um, that, that you think you got such a high grade on? I feel like all we can practice, the coaches and players – did a great job helping me prepare, developing, telling me get better habits. And without them, I don't think I'll be rated that high. But as long as I keep trying to get better and evolving and watching film with older guys like DP and everybody, I feel like that'll keep happening. What are some of those habits that you were working on? Staying focused, re reading keys, doing my job. Whenever, whenever it's time for me to make a play, I just make the play. Appreciate it. We'll do a few more for OJ. We'll go back to Jordan McPherson, the Miami Herald. Jordan. Yeah, hey again, OJ. I uh, wanted to ask you, you touched on the younger guys in your group. Uh, the fact that you and Zaquan are both getting pretty good playing time in your first year, how much does it help having another true freshman? You guys can bounce things off each other. You guys are going through this together. How much does that help you in terms of your progression? I mean, it's great, man. As long as we keep working – and going hard every day and practice and learning and listening to the older guys, soon we'll all be in. Awesome, OJ. We appreciate your time and good luck on Saturday. Thank you.